Corey, what are you reading right now? Am I reading right now? Yeah. Say exercise metabolism. Exercise metabolism. Oh, good. So did you steal that book from, from the office? Because I can't find my copy. I did not. <laughs> okay. Just checking. Not, not that right. I would, I wouldn't accuse you of stealing. <laughs> Lance told me to pick up a copy, so okay. I'm giving it a try. That's a nice little book. Do you have any questions yet, Core Core? Um, I do actually. So I could just be making this bigger than it is, but kind of something that pops in my head is just kind of like shifting from anaerobic to aerobic there's kind of like a delay to turn on the aerobic system no there's not mm -mm. go go ahead finish your question then. so kind of like at the onset of like an exercise you're gonna have to use aero or anaerobic system right so if we can kind of increase aerobic power and get that on quicker yeah can kind of decrease fatigue and get more work done through a workout, something like that. Am I kind of on the right track here with that? Yeah. Yeah. But let me, let me, let me just offer your perspective, right? Okay. So as we're sitting here right now, um, which energy systems are working? All of them. Exactly. So when you start an exercise, aren't all of them going at the same time? It's just the different rates at which they can provide energy. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, so it's not that the aerobic system is delayed, it's just that it's a much more complex system, so it takes longer for it to be able to, to produce enough output to contribute, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so theoretically, there are methods that will allow you to, to do that faster, right? So if I have more of the aerobic enzymes and um, all the constituents of the aerobic system, uh, in quantity through training, then then theoretically you can accelerate the the, the uh, rate at which it can start to contribute. But I don't know how much of that. I don't know how much of, of an impact that, that that we make directly on that. A lot of times, I don't think it's as cut and dry as do this protocol and you'll increase the rate. Because um, again, it's like as long as we have more stuff. To work with right um we, we can certainly get better at it but i don't know how huge an impact it would make okay makes sense yeah did you read the did you read the one study where they did the 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 really short protocol the, the sprint protocol and and where each each uh it was like a four minute rest mm -hmm. and 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 the aerobic wow. system kicked on like really strongly, even by the second, the second yeah. interval. Yeah. So that's a really good representation of, of, of kind of what the, the question is, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, look at Lance throwing it up, throwing the study up on the screen. There you go. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, that, that, that just kind of gives you an example that it, 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 it comes on as, as, you know, quick as, as it can. I think that the only thing that would probably you'd have to train a lot to to make a gigantic impact on that mm -hmm. as far as the the rate goes i i, I you know go ahead i'm trying to kind of keep this like practical and figure out sort of how can we sort of incorporate the energy systems into like programming so we can start to increase like work done throughout a session stuff like that just so we can kind right. of get more from clients that's kind of where i'm coming from yeah. Um, you know, if, if, uh, I, I don't know how much thinking in energy systems helps if we, if we know what the desired outcome is. Um, because at no point in time, do you know what the contribution of those systems are in a, in a real time situation so during a training session how do you know how much is anaerobically driven how do you know how much is aerobically driven i think that you focus on the outcome so so let me give you let me try to give you a for instance okay so if you're training a a, a 10k runner 
and a 400 meter guy, all right? So theoretically our 400 meter guy would have to rely a lot on anaerobesis, right? So about half, a little bit more than half. Um, and our, our distance guy probably doesn't have to d demand much. So, so um, which, which one would be more reliant on um, high threshold motor units to fire to run their race, the 400 meter guy or the distance guy? 400 meter guy? Of course. So, so do I want to do a bunch of long, slow distance? Well, and there's times to do it, and I get that, but I'm just speaking, I'm trying to, to identify some specificity here in your programming, right? So if I need to access high threshold mode units, does it behoove me to do a bunch of long, slow distance? Probably not. As, as a developmental aspect, probably not, right? So, so now I know that, that so his intervals and his, his running is going to be at a higher speed higher velocity than than my distance guy would be right and so now i know that what type of interval that i'm going to be now so here's a little interesting twist of fate so if let's just say that my 400 meter guy is very reliant on, on anaerobic resources so he's going to use a lot of glycolysis because of the duration of his race so let's just say he's world class he runs like a 45 second 400 um how do i assure from an interval training standpoint that he's using glycolysis and not dipping into aerobic resources when I'm, when I'm programming his, his intervals, Do you know, can you, is there a way to know for sure? Like what? He's so using? once again, I would agree with you that you don't know for sure, but what if I, so how can I, how can I bias my training to give me the best shot at, at, at identifying that would you use like a tell him to run at a certain intensity or right like that? okay so so I need a certain intensity so again I, I have to have a high rate of speed right but what about the rest interval what would what would you so what would you put so let's let's just say we're running quarters and and what would be the rest interval between quarters to assure that he's he's emphasizing the anaerobic side of of the demand it would have to be incomplete based on Incomplete. How he, how he recovers. Okay, so so what what happens what 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 happens if if I if I don't rest enough in the next interval based on what you know from the book that you just held up? You're gonna increase like H what are you plus gonna, ions stuff like that. What what, what which which energy system gonna, are you okay. are you going to to in, to increase the demand on? When you'd increase demand on aerobic. You yeah. Be able to use that so, so okay. if that's not the adaptation that I'm chasing, then I need this guy to rest a really, really long time, mm -hmm. because because eventually the the glycolysis is just going to inhibit itself, and now I'm going to have to rely on aerobic sources, and I'm going to lose my power output, and now I'm not able to access my high threshold motor units because I don't have enough energy production that's that that's being produced fast enough to do so, right? Mm -hmm. So. So now I've got a guy that ran a 400 meters and he's going to rest 15 minutes and then he's going to run another one. And, and, and again, that's what I'm trying to specifically address a component of this performance. I'm not saying that the guy doesn't need aerobic, aerobic, aerobically driven training, because again, I think I, the last study I saw on this was like 2001 and it said 43%, I believe was, was the, the contribution of the aerobic system. So it's very strongly aerobic. We need to ab absolutely train that system. But if I'm targeting the anaerobic component, I, I need to, to address that. So again, it's like, I, I have to understand the influence of the energy systems, but I don't really know which one is gonna, gonna contribute the, the most, but I can bias it a little bit. You see what I'm getting mm -hmm. at? Yeah. You know, so, so learn that stuff, understand it, but, but ultimately it's gonna depend on on what your outcome is going to be, because again, we just don't know. Like, how much mm -hmm. how much ATP CP are you contributing to in a in a three mile run? I don't know. Yeah. Right. right. Mm -hmm. But but maybe he needs it for a kick, right? And so mm -hmm. maybe maybe you do a little bit of speed work as a component of, of his training to to address that. Um, you know, again, looking at what his time is, and you say, okay, so here's 
here's the distance that you're going to need to cover in your kick. Here's how, how fast we want you to be able to do it. Here's what you can do now. Can we do it faster later on? And just look at the, 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 the pure outcome aspect of it versus saying, okay, we need to train his ATP CP system and we need to do this, this duration of interval and, and so on and mm -hmm. so forth in, in, in an attempt to increase whether rate or capacity uh, of that system. So I, I would just try to look at it more from, from the, the outcome perspective. Okay. But don't, and, and again, I say this and I said, don't negate your, your, your study of understanding of those systems because it does allow you to make better decisions. Otherwise you're just a superficial technician and you're, you're not really reasoning your way through this. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, so, I, so I don't want to negate that. Okay. It's, it, it, there is value in that understanding. But when you're actually writing the program, you got to look at like, okay, what are they capable of doing today? What do I need to get them by such and such a date? How am I going to get them there? Because you're not going to be thinking like, oh, we need more glycolysis. We need more, you know, you just got to look at the times and, and what the outcome needs to be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> really? I, I think that, so like, you know, we started talking about the aerobic system and it's great, but it's not, you know, everyone needs a little bit of it. And if you had unlimited time, maybe you'd spend some time on it. But, you know, if you get someone for six weeks, what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, I mean, you just don't have time for that, that, that type of adaptation. And, and that's yeah. unfortunately a lot of what happens in, in, in our field is that we just don't get enough time. You know, if you, if you had you know, a year to train somebody or, or an Olympic cycle, you know, to train somebody, it would be a whole different world, I think. And I think that that's where some of the programming gets confused a lot, you know, because again, people are trying to apply um, some of these, these broad, you know, uh, uh, adaptations that are, that are, that are developed over a really, really long time over these short things. It's like, well, you need to do some cardiac output development and two weeks later, your heart rate's lower and they go, look, see, you're getting eccentric cardiac hypertrophy. And that's, that's really not going to happen. You know, <laughs> it's like, that's a really long term adaptation. Um, and, and so, uh, um, we just need a little bit better understanding. So, uh, so just to not dangle that too much, what, what do you think is happening then if not eccentric cardiac hypertrophy? I, I, I think the, the, the best description that I've seen is, is the adaptation at the, uh, SA node. Is that correct? It's been a while since I've looked at this, but I think it's an SA node. I believe that's right. Um, that, that influences the, the reduction in the, uh, heart rate first. I think that's what you see first, but when you're talking about like a morphological change in, in, in the structure of the heart, that takes time. You know, that's like saying, Oh, I'm going to put you on a two week mass building program and I'm going to, you know, you're going to end up with 30 inch thighs in two weeks and, you know, just follow the magazine principles or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I, and I haven't looked into any topics on this, but do you know the plasticity of cardiac muscle versus skeletal muscle? Are they similar? Um, they are, they are, they are similar, but different. I can, I can tell you that. Um, I don't, man, this is stuff that I just haven't studied in a really long time. No, no I mean, me either wouldn't hold it against well, you. You're the anatomist. Come on, man. I mean, you're the one with the master's degree in anatomy. There's a lot of anatomy, Bill. <laughs> yeah, no, I understand. I understand. Um, now, I I don't I don't re recall the the like the comparative rate. Is that what we're talking about? Like a rate of adaptation in the cardiac muscle versus? Well, well yeah, you might do a hypertrophy block for four, six, eight weeks, maybe, yeah. um, and and you know put on a few pounds of muscle throughout your body, but. If you do four, six, eight weeks of long, slow running, are you yeah, going to get, yeah. I, I you know, it, man, I hate saying this, but it's probably going to be like an N equals one kind of a thing. I think you're going to be falling back on some genetics. I bet some people are going to be like the high responders and you're, a lot of people are going to be the low responders and then you're going to get the people that are kind of all over the middle. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, I haven't looked at it. I, I certainly haven't looked at this in quite some time, so. 
I yeah. can't speak with, with any any level of intelligence. I wonder what that, you know, genetics wise, what is it that gets some of those people with VO2 maxes of 80 and some people with 40? I don't know. I don't know. I When I was a student in, in my master's program and uh, um, the the theoretical max heart rate based on age went out the window <laughs> when I... I tested an 81 year old woman on a, on a cycle ergometer submaximal test. And she was quite comfortable with a heart rate of over 180. So <laughs> and yeah, she was from Germany. She grew up, she grew up in like the war torn Germany and she was a very tough little lady. And, 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 you know, you asked her, are you okay? And she's like, you know, getting <laughs> in the middle of the test. She just wanted to keep going. She wanted to test herself. So, 